I'm going to demonstrate in a short video the workflow that I use both in a lecture theater but also much more applicably right now for a remote lecture. I'm using an iPad Pro with a pencil that allows greater interactivity in terms of creating uh, uh, material very similar to the way one might use a blackboard or a whiteboard in a lecture theater. This is obviously a demo of the workflow I use. It's not, you know, I'm in no way prescribing that uh, this is the right way to do it. I hope you'll pick up uh, some useful uh, hints, tips on, on how to uh, uh, use software in, in, in useful combinations. Um, one of the things you do have to remember to do if you're going to, as I'll show you, share your screen, is you have to remember to uh, set up Do Not Disturb. Yeah. One nipped in there, and uh, you also want to try to shut down notifications. I um, am not going to shut down all the notifications just simply because I don't want to turn them all back on, but it's something you should consider doing if you're teaching uh, uh, regularly from a specific machine. So the um, combination of apps that I'm going to be demonstrating are Canvas, Zoom, and then Keynote, Apple Keynote. You can also use Microsoft PowerPoint. If you do use PowerPoint on an iPad, you will need to set up a Microsoft 365 account, which does take a little time and is something that there are instructions on the uh, CIS website for how to do. Notice also that I am using a wireless headset. If you try to use the microphone on your iPad, the clicking uh, of the pen will be picked up and it's extremely annoying to listeners. So let's go into Canvas. I, Canvas is very useful because you can generate announcements uh, directly that go to all the students. Um, you can turn the Zoom option on directly in the application, and this is whether you're using Canvas online in the browser on a laptop, say, or, or in an iPad, um, you can see that I have, in fact, scheduled recurring meetings Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. using that uh, capability. You can also post, uh, say, a link to your standard Zoom account. I've done so on my home page of this dummy um, uh, um, account. So. Um, just up here at the top, there is a link directly. If we click on that, that will actually open up a Zoom session and take us straight into the uh, um, correct uh, Zoom link. So in this case, I'm going to actually go back to using the Zoom setting, and I'm going to start the meeting. Now, one of the things I've done in setting up uh, this meeting, and maybe actually if we go ahead and um, edit this meeting, you'll see that I have um, selected in the options that I enable um, people to join the meeting before I myself get on. And um, I'm also uh, selecting muting participants on entry just because otherwise that can be quite disruptive. It's launched a web page. We're going to use the start over on the right hand side simply to cause uh, us to follow essentially a link, which is a Zoom app. And I'm going to call in using, you know, internet audio. It usually find that pretty satisfactory. So people can now hear me, but they can't see my screen. I'm going to do a couple of things at this point. I actually want to record the session. So I'm using the top right. I'm going to record to the iCloud. That means that Zoom will keep a copy of everything that is said and also that appears on the screen. The students will have been able to join the meeting ahead of my joining it because of the settings I used. They um, will be able to hear me right now. Now, the options I can use is I can use share content in the top right, for instance, to bring up a whiteboard. Now, the whiteboard allows up to 12 screens feel very much like, you know, conventional 
uh, uh, whiteboard. The main issue with this is not um, ease of use. It is very easy to use. It's really the storage of the material you generate. I can create a new page, page two. I can go on creating new pages. I can also navigate just by touching um, you know, between those pages. I am limited 12, and if I, the only way of saving uh, this material is through the um, saving them simply as photographs. And that uh, I find terribly uh, limiting. Also, if I quit the whiteboard, um, either intentionally or not intentionally, and I go back to the whiteboard, I've actually lost all that material. So I, it, it's a, it's not terrific. What I would tend to favor, what I in fact do completely favor, is the sharing of my screen. Now, I'm going to hit start broadcast here. You, you're not going to see it change because of the way that various software, um, I'm using to record actually, um, uh, sort of conflicts with that. We're now in broadcast mode of our screen, so I can go to Keynote and just use the standard uh, in the top right, the uh, just the presentation mode to um, flip through the slides in fairly conventional fashion. We can bring up a laser pointer uh, in order to point to uh, the items in this mode, and we can also add annotations extremely easily. So I actually don't tend to use this mode. Actually, I find easier to operate in a combination of modes. If I have animations uh, for this slide, I will just let those run through, as you can see it's happening now as I'm talking. But often when I get to um, uh, you know, a page that I actually want to annotate or, I, or for instance, I haven't prepared the slides earlier, I might, in fact, drop into the sort of direct pen writing mode. So, for instance, here I could actually just add a couple of uh, lines directly to the graph, that being a linear one, this one being a parabolic model. What we're doing is discussing, uh, you know, the impact of these, but I could even get to the point of actually um, developing the formulae, you know, directly. So here we could be discussing how the uh, theory component for the ith um, dependent variable, and let's say we're actually using a hypothesis, which is the parabolic one. The other terms that we have, for instance, are the uh, error in the uh, independent uh, variable. But more importantly, of course, what we're going to be doing is attempting to minimize the chi-square as we vary A. So then in the workflow, I find that I take uh, slides where I have um, you know, created them during um, uh, uh, live, you know, I may have added bullet, point, bullet points. The parameter A, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I actually type sort of directly over them and create a, um, you know, offline create a slide that based on the, um, on the uh, earlier workflow. Now there, there are, I have prepared a few notes um, shown on the screen right now that I do need to cover uh, because there are mistakes I've made and um, I, I, uh, maybe help you. The first I've already mentioned, which is that you must use a wireless or, uh, or some kind of external mic, don't use the one on the iPad because it picks up the pen taps and it becomes very distracting to people listening. Um, as I said, I would recommend using Zoom, broadcasting the screen, 
and then using Keynote or PowerPoint, which PowerPoint is 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 uh, works very similarly to Keynote. Um, I wouldn't recommend using the whiteboard option in Zoom unless you really are looking for an absolute minimal setup because um, you, you're going to lose what you write in whiteboard too easily if you quit out of it. Um, so, or, uh, you, you will lose. It doesn't auto save, which the other applications effectively do. Um, the use of handwriting directly into slides I find is better than actually running the presentation mode on the keynote or the PowerPoint and then your handwriting there tends to get again lost too easily so I tend to handwrite actually into sort of file creation mode um, and that way that material is available for me to edit and work with subsequently. I do use Zoom for recording uh, directly and then it's very easy to set up links uh, or point people to the uh, Zoom recordings in the future for if they want to rerun the um, presentation. The Zoom whiteboard is uh, is able to allow you to collaborate with other people. Multiple people can be writing on it, but the trouble is um, uh, the saving of it is, 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 is only based on sort of taking photos of it, which is not very sophisticated. There is a lot of advice on um, Brown's uh, remote teaching website now about using Zoom for remote teaching, so I do recommend you having a look at that. Um, do note that if you're going to use Zoom screen sharing in a um, conference call or lecture, uh, it does disable other uh, ways of using iPad screen mirroring. So, for instance, it's it's you have to use a different technique if you want to uh, show your Zoom in a live lecture theater to people as well as having people um, use it offline. Uh, I usually solve that actually by having two, both having both a laptop and an iPad or, or two, um, you know, two different devices, one of which is, is, is effectively the one I'm writing on and the other one is connected to the projector to so that people can see what's going on. There really isn't another way around that. Um, of course, if you aren't dealing with anybody in an auditorium and you're doing it all online, then you don't have that issue. So uh, you can get away with just a single iPad. Okay, look, I hope uh, this has been useful. Um, so I'm now gonna just do what I would do if I was ending a lecture, which is um, just going back into Zoom. And at this point, um, you know, we would stop the recording. That recording uh, does take a little while to get rendered, um, depending on how busy they are. It can take a rather long time. I'm also just simply going to end the meeting. So that's end meeting. Now you're still able to see what's happening on my screen, but the students wouldn't be able to. Okay, um, and that's it. Okay then, bye.